Hello Blender friends and welcome to another Super 3 Boy Blender tutorial. In this tutorial we will make our cube character jump when we hit spacebar and we will be texturing him. You should have completed the first tutorial in the series as we will be modifying that file or you may download the required .blend file from Nistic or the link in the video description. Also available on Nistic is the original quality video as well as the completed blend file for any tutorial in the 2.5x series. The videos are also available for your mobile devices such as iPhone, iPod Touch, and Android. Let's get started. As you can see, we have already completed our logic bricks below. Uh, we are simply going to add another set of logic bricks to make our cube character jump. So following the previous tutorial, I'm just going to add a sensor here, uh, keyboard, controller, and actuator motion. I'm going to drag here just to connect these together and collapse the controller. I'm going to just use a scroll bar here to scroll a little bit down so we can see what we're doing. Then we're going to add key, just by clicking there and hitting spacebar to set that key. I'm going to collapse that. And location, we just need to set that as 1 on the last one, which is the z-axis. So now when we hit P, our cube should jump, although that is a little bit much. So let's hit escape and change that to something like point one. It's just trial and error. Hit P. Now it has a nice little jump. When we hit spacebar. So right now our cube character is looking kind of bland. Naturally dull, gray, faceless cube characters are quite sad and are known to jump off their planes into the endless abyss. So it's now time to kind of stick a texture on it. You will need to download this texture from Nistic or by finding a link to it in the video's description. Just like normal rendered Blender scenes, we use UV mapping to add image textures to our meshes. Since this was covered in a recent tutorial, I will be going over it quite quickly. So if you're having any trouble or want a more in-depth explanation to UV mapping, please see my Blender 2.5 UV mapping tutorial. First, we need to go back into the default view to give us a little bit more space to work. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the game mode, go up here to the top, and click default. Since uh, we need to look at our UV mapping window, I'm simply going to split the screen by going up in this top corner, left clicking and dragging to open a new window, and then with my mouse in each one of these 3D views, I'm going to hit T to get rid of the object tool, so we also have a little bit more space. So we need to go in here and click UV Image Editor. And we need to set the seams on our cube. So go into edit mode, resize this a little bit by clicking this bar so we can select our edge mode here. And you can kind of collapse it back. A to deselect everything. I'm hitting shift plus alt left mouse button to and the alt free rotate to kind of see where I'm going to put my seams. So what you need to do is just follow along on where I put my seams uh, so the texture will be correct. So I'm just using the left mouse button to select these seams here. And just kind of do something similar to that so the texture will work. Hit spacebar, search for seam, mark seam, a to deselect everything, A to select everything back again, and then we need to press U to unwrap, and that unwraps it, and boom, we have our cube unwrapped over here. 
so I have a texture that you have downloaded from uh, either the link in the video description or Nistic. Open layout.tga is the file, and it works just like the 3D view. So we do hit A to select everything and use the grab and rotate uh, buttons to align the 3D kind of mesh here to our texture. So hit R, 90 degrees, negative 90 degrees, and G key, and kind of line it over here. So now that we don't need our UV mapping area, let's just go ahead and collapse that. So click on these diagonal lines here with your left mouse button, drag inward, a little arrow should appear, and it should disappear. So zoom out a little, go into object mode, and then hit shift alt, kind of move this up a little bit. So before we can see our work uh, in the game engine, we need to change one setting. So there's a little icon right next to object mode. Click on that and change that from solid to texture. And this will allow us to see our texture when we start it in the game engine. So I'll hit P, and as you can see, we have a very happy little cube. So from now on, let's just call this guy QB. And so we actually have a name to call him instead of the cube character. So we're going to make some simple edits and tweaks to our logic bricks to fit our new texture. Because as you can see, when I hit up arrow, it kind of goes to the side. The down air goes to the other side, not where his face is pointing. But if we hit the left and right arrows, those are fine. So we just need to fix our up and down arrows. So we can hit escape, and we're going to go back into the logic brick window. So I'm just going to go up here and select game logic. And we are going to open up the first and the fourth little logic bricks here and we're gonna change uh, the X value we're just gonna change it to 0 and we're gonna make the Y value negative 0.1 gonna collapse that and we're gonna do same thing for the other one but we're gonna make this the X 0 and we're gonna make this pot is positive 0.1 on the Y axis and we're going to collapse that. And we're actually going to make a slight change for more accurate physics. We're going to ch change the physics type to dynamic. And this should uh, just make it more accurate. So we're going to go back in here, go into the default settings, hit P. See, it goes forward and backward, rotates just fine. And little QB can jump up and down in happiness. Thanks for watching. If you have any specific questions on the Blender game engine, don't hesitate to visit form.nistic.com. We have several resident experts that will be happy to assist you. If you're looking for a challenge, we have a Blender game engine contest this month, February 2011, as part of our monthly Blender contest. If you're looking for a place to get some good practice with what you're learning in the Blender Game Engine tutorials, this is the perfect place to apply it. The contest will focus on developing a small mini game in Blender, so follow the link in the video description to get more information. Uh, we also have a prize, uh, anything you want in the official Blender store. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.